Hey guys, it's Billy. Uh, apologies, I missed last week's topic on gender marker, so I'm going to do it now because it's one that I wanted to put on my own channel anyway. Um, so basically, I've kind of whittled it down to about 12 different things that I needed to change. Um, I, I, I've, I've only, basically I've done all of them except for my passport um, because I have I'm not planning to travel until overseas until next year, so it's just an expense that I don't really need to incur at this point. Um, so I'll just go through the steps that I took um, basically when changing my gender marker and uh, in terms of changing documentation. First step that I took, which isn't gender marker, but it can help when you're in that stage before you're actually able to change your gender marker, is um, to change your name. So about five or six years ago now, five years ago, I changed my name uh, to Billy. You can do that at your registry of births, deaths and marriages. Um, you just apply for a change of name certificate. I think it was about $140 or something like that. Basically, you just fill out a form. You have to explain the reason why you want to change your name. So, I mean, you can. I didn't put on there because I was transitioning, but I'm sure you could easily put that as the reason. I think I just said that I'd been going by that name for quite a long time and I wanted to legalize it. Um, it took a little while, it took a few weeks to process, then my new um, birth certificate arrived in the mail, or you can also go in and pick it up um, with the changed name. So obviously the gender marker on your birth certificate at that stage is still going to be um, female. Um, then the next step that I took was to change my um, change my bank details. Basically, uh, I had a lot of problems with the bank in Australia we have called the Commonwealth Bank. Um, I went into a branch there to try and change the um, the you know the prefix on my card from um, Ms to Mister, and I basically just went to a branch and said, my local branch, I think where I'd opened the account, and said um, that I wanted to change the prefix from Mr. Mister. Mister. Um, it was, it, it, yeah, I had a very unpleasant interaction with the branch manager who basically said, you need to prove that you've changed your sex um, in order to do that. And I thought, how ridiculous that a bank would need that. What, what difference does it make um, to a bank? what gender I am, um, I, you know, I'm living as male, I'm presenting as male. Um, anyway, I ended up down the track writing a, a very strong letter of complaint about that experience and um, apparently, according to them, uh, the, the people involved were um, spoken to. So that gave me a sense of satisfaction because I felt that it was discrimination, that they didn't give, give me any other option. So I just had to de deal with it, it after being a customer with them for, um, you know, 30 years. Well, not quite since birth, but almost. Um, but basically what I ended up doing then was just changing banks. Um, I, I made sure I told them the reason why I was leaving. And basically because I was changing banks, I could start up a new account with, um, with St. George is the bank that I went with uh, in, in a male name. Uh, they didn't ask to prove my gender, obviously, when someone just puts Mr. as the prefix on their application to join. Uh, no one asks them to clarify whether that's they have proof that they're male or female. Uh, they do require uh, proof of identity documents, but you'll find that a driver's license does not, uh, at least a New South Wales driver's license, does not actually have your, your um, gender marker on it. So it's, um, it's quite easy to use that and also like a bill or something which wouldn't have your gender marker on it. Uh, generally, I guess this does mean if you're passing um, as male, I was, and this was pre-T, but uh, I was anyway, and no one asked me any questions. It was, it went totally fine. So I opened up a new account with that um, prefix. <coughs> the next thing I pretty much did was to change all my cards with like memberships for different things that may have had a prefix of Miss Mister. Just wrote to them. I think I had like a, a frequent flyer card, and I just wrote to them and said, I don't know why, but you guys have the wrong gender marker here. I'm clearly not. Um, I'm clearly not miss and they just changed and apologized so that was easy um so think about all of the cards that you have in your wallet that uh may have some kind of prefix generally speaking it would come to my attention when i'd receive letters in the mail 
with a particular um, gender prefix and then I just think, oh right, okay, yep, so that energy bill is in Mr. or Miss or whatever, I need to, you know, I need to change it, update that, so then I just um, call them and update it, mostly no problems there. Um, but basically uh, in Australia, in order to get uh, reduced um, cost for testosterone, you need to change your gender marker with Medicare, and that means that you're eligible for testosterone at the rate is, that's um, received by hypogonidal men. So. Basically, when the doctor calls up, um, it's called a, what is it called, a registered script or something, can't remember. Um, they call up and um, say hypogonidal man, blah, 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 and, and they get the, the reduced rate, which is good if you're on an expensive form of testosterone like um, Testogel or Reandron. Um, it does make a difference. I haven't really found it to make much of a difference with primatestin or Sustanon. It's pretty much the same rate. There has been some discussion about if you change your um, gender marker with Medicare before you have um, before you have had a hysterectomy, that the government won't subsidise your hysterectomy through the public system. Um, I, I, you know, honestly, I, I haven't looked into it too much. I did speak to a gynaecologist who suggested to me that she was pretty sure there would be a way around that. Um, that, that it would just be that they take it on a case-by-case -case basis and it would be a matter of writing a letter to Medicare um, it, with your doctor's support uh, so that it would be pretty easy to grant that. Um, but at any rate, in order to change your um, gender marker with Medicare, you'll need to change your birth certificate, um, which is obviously the kind of uh, you know cornerstone document in terms of gender marker change, at least in Australia. And um, I have actually made a video, um, which you can check out, I'll put a link down here, on changing your birth certificate without having a hysterectomy in New South Wales. Um, but essentially, and just a second, I just want to kind of read a little bit from something that explains this. So all states and territories in Australia have some form of legislation covering correction of birth certificates. Your birth certificate can be corrected based on the legislation in the state or territory where you were born. So that means the registry of births and marriages usually in your state. Um, legislation does vary from state to state. Most states require at least two letters to certify that you have undergone at least two irreversible treatment, treatment procedures as part of your sex affirmation. One of these in, can be chest reconstructive surgery, which can be certified by your top surgeon. The other irreversible procedure can be testosterone hormone treatment, which can be certified by your treating endocrinologist. Um, you'll find that some endocrinologists will sign the, birth, the change of birth certificate form if you have had a pellet implant because they consider that a medical procedure. Others may sign it just based on um, injectable form of hormone. Um, some state legislation in Australia requires certification of the removal of the female reproductive organs, um, so a total hysterectomy. You'll find there's actually a case in WA going on at the moment about um, two guys who are seeking to change their uh, gender marker without having had um, a hysterectomy or any kind of lower surgery. Um, so. Men who have undergone irreversible sex affirmation procedures are then eligible for a correction of their legal sex on their birth certificate. So you can just basically download a form from the Registry of Birth, Sex and Marriages website. And you pay some amount of money, like $140 again, something like that. And they uh, either post out or you can, I think you might be able to go pick it up, your new birth certificate, which basically has no mention of um, living as a, a, a living as a, um, of the female gender marker. Uh, just down the bottom it says pr previously known as. So because I changed my name first, I could just um, change my gender and then the birth certificate was, was all finished. I guess if you wait to change your birth certificate you um, and your name at the same time, you'll still need to apply separately for the change of name certificate. Um, so it, it's worthwhile just doing it first so that you can start using your, your new name legally. Um, so what else do I have here? Uh, next thing was, so I changed it with Medicare. 
uh, which meant going into a Medicare office and I just did it there, showed them the changed birth certificate. Um, the woman had to go and ask a question, they're all fine, nice, changed it on the spot. Um, then driving license, so that just went down to the local RTA, again, showed the birth certificate. Um, so yeah, that was pretty easy. I don't think it cost anything to get a new driving license. I think because of the, because of the reason that I was getting it, they just did it for free. Um, and yeah, as I said, doesn't say anything on the actual driving license to say M or F, but um, it's nice to have that new photo when you're actually like looking, you know, different as well to the old photo. Um, then what else we got here? Um, tax office. So I just wrote a letter to the tax office actually. I just did this, I did that about six months ago, they never wrote back to me, so I've just done it again. There's a form on their website that's like a change of, um, information document or something like that and it says that that's the form to use for gender marker but actually doesn't have anything in the form to just say that you want to change your gender marker which I highlighted to them in a letter um, so so I'll get to find out what how that went um, I'm assuming that it would be fine I also just in my letter that I wrote I just um, submitted my I gave a photocopy of my birth certificate and uh, driving license, I think, so um, so that they could all change that. Um, then I think employment records, so at my work everything would have been in um, female pronoun, uh, female prefixes, etc. So I wrote to, uh, I called our HR department and changed, asked them to change all that. Um, I think they, they didn't require any proof or anything. Um, so then we've got university records. Um, yeah, I have yet to change my first undergraduate degree um, to, to, um, to, to show my new name and, um, and gender marker, etc. because it costs money and I have to go in there and all this shit, so it's kind of annoying. Uh, and I haven't had to show it for a job. So I haven't done that yet, but I have got all the info about doing it. Basically, there's some kind of form where you change your record as well and you need to get a new testimony um, issued in your new name. So it costs like, I think, you know, all this shit costs like a hundred bucks to change a fucking document that you bloody paid for in the first place. So annoying. <laughs> the whole thing is just like mega frustrating and mega bureaucracy bullshit. In fact, yeah. I, the whole process has just been really super annoying. But yeah, change, so I did change for my master's degree. Um, I just wrote an email to the university and explained that I changed my sex and if they required any further documentation, I'd be happy to provide it. But you know, if they could just do it on the spot, on my word, that would be awesome. And they did, they were fine. Um, and you know my for that masters that was in my um, my name Billy so so I didn't have to actually change the name so it was more just their records um, in terms of if anyone called inquiring an employer in the future or something like that about me that they would be using the correct pronouns when they're looking up my record and confirming that I you know did a masters there blah blah blah. Um, other things, doctor's records, so um, I found the other day when I went into the doctor that, that I was down with some female on their records um, and so I, I asked the doctor to speak to the receptionists to get them to change it because I didn't, I, you know, I've had a, a, a you know, I talked to these people, I don't really think they need to know my business, so she, I just asked her to arrange that, hopefully she did that. Um, and one of the other things I found the other day was my pathology lab records and this is a kind of an important one that you need to change because pathology lab records need to be recorded in male if you're on testosterone because otherwise they'll be showing a female hormonal range of which you will be extremely high. Um, in, so it's really important to make sure that the pathology lab is, has a record of you as male so that when they're showing up your testosterone levels they're against a male spectrum. Um, Otherwise, you, you know, you'll, you'll have some very unrealistic ideas about where you're at. So I um, actually wrote to them because because I'd um, requested it twice and they hadn't changed it and I was very annoyed. So I wrote again a letter of complaint to them telling them that I didn't appreciate their policy in terms of this and that, that, that it was very disrespectful for them to continue sending me letters in the wrong um, prefix, the wrong pronoun. 
um, and that uh, I was basically that if they continued to do that, that it would put me at risk um, of, of, you know, violence and discovery, etc. For having letters arrive at the wrong place, potentially outing me. So, you know, I just wanted to give them the context to be aware of the, of, of the impact of their inaction. Um, <laughs> and final one, which I haven't done yet, is the passport change. Um, so the Department of Foreign Affairs in Australia issues passports for, um, so you need to, yeah, blah, 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 I'm just reading this. Uh, passport application forms are available. So if you already have a passport, I think it's, there's, you know, different, you have to get a reissue um, as opposed to if you are, um, if you're if getting issued with a new one. Uh, I don't know if there's any cost difference, but apparently, according to some people, you can actually change your um, passport before you've, um, or separately to having your birth certificate changed. Um, there's like a, they have a different kind of assessment criteria. So, um, birth certificate, birth, but here I've got listed birth certificate required, legal change of name documentation required, expired passport in your old name required. And um, when filling in the paperwork, put male in the sex gender category and then put an asterisk to go with the attached two letters from two different treating physicians, uh, GP, endo, psych, surgeon, etc., stating that you've undergone irreversible gender reassignment procedures and that for all intents and purposes you're male. Um, apparently that's all there is to it. And your new passport with male will be issued in 15 to 20 days. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've already changed your birth certificate to mail if why you need um, to to provide two letters. So I'd look into that. It's possible that you don't need to also provide two letters if, if you change your passport after you change your birth certificate. Uh, it's, it, seems, it seems kind of ridiculous that they would ask for you to prove two different things when um, you've already done it somewhere else. But the bureaucracy of the Australian government is uh, unending and I experience it daily because I work. So that, my friends, is pretty much everything that I could think of to, in order to change your gender marker. Um, it's a long and boring, laborious path that you're about to walk down if you haven't started yet. <laughs> so I wish you the best of luck and to maintain, you know, a clear and confident state of mind. And, and also I urge you, I urge you if you do come up against uh, issues when trying to change things or s discrimination, that you write it down, make a complaint. Because if no one complains, then the next person's gonna experience exactly the same thing. And there's these systemic issues uh, where, where the, the, the government documents um, aren't, aren't, um, aren't, you can't just change it with one and it all happens at once. And uh, because of this, it, it can be incredibly frustrating. And I, I just, yeah, I think if you have a bad experience, m make it better for the next person. And that, that's what I've tried to do in my process. So. I urge you all to, um, to, to do well for your fellow man and complain. Uh, all right, I hope everyone's well. Bye.